The story was shared on BBC Radio in England years ago by a Jew. His name was Beryl Gartner. Beryl Gartner. Beryl Gartner had a unique story. I don't know if you know about the Kinder, Kinder Transport. Kinder Transport was Great Britain opened up its borders to bring many children under Nazi-occupied countries to Britain as a safe haven. This started in 1938 after Kristallnacht. I'm sure you know what Kristallnacht is. But after Kristallnacht, they allowed children from Germany and other countries nearby, Vienna, Czechoslovakia, they were ruled by the Germans, they allowed the children to come to Britain and they set them up in homes and orphanages. Over the next year, close to 10,000 Jewish children left these German countries and came to Britain. Many of them were the sole survivors of their families. And then the Second World War broke out. This is called the Kinder Transport, which means the transportation of the children from the Nazi-occupied countries to the United Kingdom to England. Beryl Gartner was one of these kids who was separated from his parents. He was put in an orphanage and he did not stop crying. Day and night he was weeping. He missed his parents. They tried to calm him down. They tried to appease him. They tried to give him toys, to give him prizes, to get him excited this way, that way. Nothing helped. Nothing helped. The poor kid was devastated. He was only 11 years old. Imagine 11 years old, torn away from his father and mother. He he never knew if he's ever going to see them again. And it was just, he was so sad. They could They could just not get him to calm down. He was just always sad and and depressed and crying and sobbing. They felt bad for him. The people at the orphanage were good people. And there were other Jewish kids there, but nobody uh, nobody found a way to to cause him serenity and relaxation and simcha. One day, the news came to the orphanage that King George VI is going to... uh, travel past their village, he liked to visit the different uh, kinder transports, the different children that were saved, and he liked to visit his subjects in in Britain. And he's going to come by, he's going he's to travel by the village, and every, obviously everybody will come out for this parade, for this procession, and salute the king, and cheer for the king, and sing for the king, and, and, uh, and express appreciation to the king. King George VI was the king of England from 1936, which is four years before the Second World War, and three years, four years, and he died in 1952. 1952, that's why Queen Elizabeth has been a queen for very, very, very many, many years, because King George uh, died in 52. In any case, so when Beryl heard, Beryl Gartner heard that the king is coming, he calmed down, he stopped crying. They were wondering why he stopped crying. He had a little secret. Anyway, the great day came and the royal carriage and the royal entourage began its procession through this village, through this town where the orphanage was. And of course, everybody came out, the men and the women and the children and the orphanage. Everybody was out there cheering for the king, saluting the king and this great, illustrious, aristocratic and royal parade. And there were barricades as they do. You know, the police put out barricades to be able to hold back the crowds as the royal carriage passed through the main road. As the king passed by Beryl, Beryl Gartner, this 11-year-old kid, he jumped through the barricades, unleashing his full power, not looking right, not looking left. He ran. He didn't run. He flew <laughs> like a rocket. He flew to the carriage. He flew to the carriage and tried leaping, jumping onto it where the king was sitting. Of course, the royal guards, the bodyguards of the king, saw this, and this could not be tolerated. Who knows what, even though he's a little kid, but who knows what he can do to the king? Who knows what's in his head? Does he want to hit the king? Does he want to uh, push him? Does he want to kill him? So they grabbed him, they grabbed him, and they, they held him tight. And he was screaming, I want to see the king. And the king heard the commotion. So he turned to his bodyguard and he said, what's going on there? And I said, this kid broke through the barricades and he tried leaping up on your wagon, on your carriage. So we stopped him. The king said, let him come over. And he was granted permission to face King George VI. And the king said, you wanted to see me, what's going on? 
And instead of speaking, he burst out crying. And he said, I thank you for saving me from Germany, but I miss my parents and I'm afraid that they're going to die. Please, can you bring my parents here to be with me? And the king looked at him with compassion and he said, I'd love to, but the war broke out. We are at war with Germany. I can't bring your parents here. And the boy looked at him and said, but you're the king of England. You can do anything. I'm sure that you could bring my parents here if you really want. And the king said, what are the names of your parents? And he gave the king the names of his parents. And he's told him where they live. And the king said, let me see what I can do. And the boy thanked him. And he went back to the orphanage, not knowing what to expect. A few months later, he was called in to the office of the head of the orphanage. He thought he was going to be reprimanded. He thought he would be punished very, very severely for what he did. You know, you don't do this. He broke all the rules. But they never punished him. But now he was called in. He thought, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What happens now? And the man told him that the king was very impressed and moved by your request, and he decided to send you a gift. He said, what's the gift? And the man opened the door, and his parents walked through the orphanage. King George VI managed to rescue them and get them out of Germany and bring them to Great Britain. Beryl was reunited with his mommy and his tati. And when I read the story, I thought to myself, you know, the Baal HaTanya, the Alter Rebbe Rabbi Shnei Zaman of Liadi, teaches that the days and weeks before Rosh Hashanah, the king is not in the palace. Where's the king? He's in the fields. He's in the villages. He's in the farms. He goes out. He wants to visit his subjects. The Baal HaTanya writes there, it's like a king who comes out to the fields to hang out with the people, all smiles and joy and happiness and vulnerability. So the king is not in his palace. He's in the villages. He's in the towns. He's in the parks. He's out there with the people. He's out there with the people. He wants to meet everybody. And at such a moment, we often stand there, but we stand behind barricades. We feel that we can't run. We can't break through. We feel barricades in our heart. I feel that my heart is blocked. I can't approach them. We're too distant. Or maybe the barricades come because of certain things I did or I said or I thought and I'm so embarrassed and I feel that there's barricades. Or maybe the barricades come because of certain things that people told me or certain things that I have learned and therefore I feel there's barricades. And I say to you, dearest, dearest Talmidais, special, special girls, children of Hashem, Jump through the barricades. Don't stop. Jump through the barricades. Get on that wagon. The bodyguards may want to stop you, but the king wants to, he wants you there. And ask him for whatever you want. Ask him to be reunited with your deepest self and reunited with everything you want to be reunited. And don't be afraid. Just be there, be raw and be real and be vulnerable, heart to heart. Remember, Hashem's love to you is absolutely limitless. There's no boundaries. He wants to hear everything you have to say. And if there's barricades, look at the barricades and say, bye-bye barricades, leap forth this Rosh Hashanah onto the divine carriage. We say four times, Ubechein in Shemayna Esra. And the fourth one comes from the Bechein in Megillus Esther. Ubechein Avay Elamelech HaShaloi Chadas. Esther said, sometimes you got to go to the king even if you're not called. You jump through the barricades, like Esther Hamalka. You jump through the barricades and you save the Jewish people. So I say to you, this Rosh Hashanah, jump through the barricades. Don't be afraid of any emotional, psychological, spiritual, social, intellectual, physical barricades. Jump through those barricades. Don't remain confined and imprisoned by barricades. You get onto that carriage without fear, without hesitancy. Not because you don't have fear, but because you're not dictated by your fear. 